the aim of this writing is to be an example to itself, a condition for a condition, a fixed point for our own irreconcilable part, useful because we won't leave it behind. For how are we going to approach the spatial orienting of this body existing when we're in this screen, in this room? It's obvious we don't have to be there when something happens to us. But even in the anonymity of what we've fallen into, there's something about the domain of us, something like a certain space, immobile but reigning, something about the fact of several million years ago, not here, murmur, here, I want something other than time. What we can't understand, we can't but make. A miracle in place, like a spanner set to sit upon the sea. A mind which, fleeced of its fillings, boggles a stammer in the thoughts around the writing as it's being written. Hibernating in the moonstone background of our resplendent decay, is it all fusion and loss? Ready to splice into concurrence any two, no three things? Ready to turn the question towards a battered globe that's been all along in this very room, and then in a mutage, exit this fixed rejoinder into a continued hush where microbe and force field are becoming one, no three? The refurbished arms are then resealed before the as new packaging is fired shut. I want something other than time. There is no victory over death, guys. The death guys free themselves, making themselves uncategorizable again and again. The end, an elastic dominion, artifice for us. I was recruited to be a poet, but our world, one of indefinite centers, has all the imitation, gnosis, and intermediaries that could burn, even this exceptional fatigue, whatever. There being no splice to disclose us further, we still need private languages to bear eros into touch, to pass ourselves into atonement, to pass as imminent, sonorous things. The sun, you say, remains unintelligible. And like Ditto the parent, all these alchemical codes inscribing us to live by thoughts, to scale time. I want something other than time. My way of proceeding, in which I no longer hear the voice aside from its echo, might have become banal even to me, like my, incommunicable rem like my incommunicable remains form a barricade against unity, but this time it's not news to me anymore. My tie bears a picture of death for the whole office to see, but it can't even be called death because its significance has been abolished. It's a tie. It's a window that, having withdrawn entirely from the outside, it had asserted itself for centuries to separate, now conceives of any situation as an enlargement of every place is in another place. My foundation has become my modesty offended by my living mouth. There's nothing clear to the dare I feel in Nietzsche's words. I am dead because I am stupid. Horrible. But now at least the page feels full. I want something other than time. Mirror on the ground, eyes for sight. I turn both in the process of vanishing, and they turn too. Their rhythm goes, we live in a dome exchanged with others. What the fuck? Other domes or other selves? Sewers, Abatha. Sewers, said Abatha. A thinning thing is fevering the thought a frameless sensitivity running parallel to time, shifting for balance back and forth between a trauma no longer in service to itself and a not wise timelessness drifting in rotations around it. Is this a poem about how experience, bound as it is to projective surfaces, necessitates and negates a fiction of consciousness? And I acquaint this question to an unaskable mystery I feel from very close to my love's face I look into my love's face, mirror for groundless sight, how we can't recover having met. 
I want something other than time. Think of a thread finer by one degree than what constitutes thread. It doesn't hold a line. It's not within our intention. In what it isn't is a rearrangeability through which it proceeds as it begins, increasing the interim of a lost union. And then just a moment ago, we're repeating an impression. We've had a similar feeling, and we have to repeat it. I tried to write an essay that would proceed by this insight to describe it. But what emerged was a way of banishing what I could see, such that the force of its expulsion would resound in its place as though a matter of principle. Here, though, in this poem, my insatiable proximity. Here, though, in this poem, my insatiable proximity to these impassable distances from me itself feels curved. So why do I feel as disturbed as comforted by this? Now I'm cuffing my book because its rays of quotable pit, because it's another perfect prison for the reappearance. I want something other than time. Last night I dreamt of a perforation in my intersubjective space where the problems of wealth and power were unworked. Waking, I realized how dead I am to the immobility of those things. Correction, due to the immobility of those structures, as they manifest in intersubjective space, I feel basically already dead. But I'm always coming back to my senses from this, exposed without locus to have been here all along. Waking, my replacement asked me if we had freed the air yet in the room we'd slept in. The instability of our fiction, I said, is measured by excess to remain in us. It sometimes seems to me, I said, that our drive for self-annihilation is affirmed by our feelings of hope. I want something other than time. With someone who writes something like, it's hard to know how long one's going to be in this poem. Because one's in the, in the, mo the, the motion of the repeated, repeated refrain. i got to start again. I'll start again. Uh, um, I want something other than time. 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 This is the thing in this book. When you look for a poem, you can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> because it, even though it has a table of contents, there's no way to find it. I want something other than time. The aim of this writing is to show that I does not disappear. Even when I disappear, I does not disappear. If I should achieve this, will I feel more or less isolated in the continuing progression of a paralysis I can only pathologize? It's not a mask. And the time over which it closes, that's not it. Not some chopped up tension between solitude and collectivity. Not that. I disappeared into my own voice below the confrontation with anonymity we might have imagined here. Better delirium than drift in my representation. Better anticipate a congealed posture, or else be effaced as the object of knowledge. I want something other than time. Cuisant writes something like, the child doesn't exist apart from the spherical protuberance the child rotates on their rupture. And I can feel that by accusing myself in this chair, in this throat, that I am still that child. This must be life for it to feel like we're writing this. We are anciently internal, I tell myself. And I tell myself, a ghost eats a ghost cake, they tell me. A vitamin grabs a hand of life, both because the alchemy of the body seems to depend on a system of twos, and because in my meditation, for no system of any kind, I fail to reassemble. I fail to marry the identicals. I want something other than time. I'm hesitant to begin by climbing up plastic into the old sky. I hesitate before writing 
Today is not a point to investigate today because it's first to return to its own form has nothing to do with today. Instead, a confusion about community, about how to listen to having heard a conversation of dust circulating between us already before we've begun, about how fucking up and condemning ourselves for it we might then reunite, about how to untie an identicality we turned into thought and incite the delusion that our secrets are not in common, about how to just be when the instant feels completed, not like a memory written through, but like a totally expanding corruption of the possible. I want something other than time. I'm like building a model of my ghost. Like the relation is to my ghost, not to the world I'm building it in. I repeat, I can't put myself or us or the world this is in in my ghost's place. My ghost doesn't care if I remain an ego. Am I making myself clear? Everything is already formed except for my ghost, who is nothing to me perceptually, but a glimpse of some grimaces covering the formlessness like some kind of mouth void. The inhibitions and the lifting of inhibitions around what I can say put and return my parasitical ghost into each event that happens to or as me. There's a condition of failure to all of this. I'm allowed to possess nothing. In my next incarnation, I want to be ghost instead, to be a schema at the expense of content. I'll balance a beam with middle my mouth. I want something other than time. I want to feel OK right here. I want to say I'm not wasted in the choppy paint of things itself a dreamy obedience to the music precedes me. As I've said before, a dream might not be built of representation. So cheap a ransom, where the accident is almost repeated, is an interior plane of expiring breath, hello, and then let go. I think the devil's in going back to a withheld meaning and letting its deferred presence prescribe a place we'll never get to. We're assuming then that this is one of them uh, special clovers, abandoned like all things here to the hype of liberation. Oh, mortar, get me higher, the loud voice goes. Move away from the shore. I want something other than time. Is it knowledge or is it magic that encompasses everything in my life? My ego looks to the light of my ego and presides, providing forwards as though my future identity had already come to me. The sock, incapable of rational knowledge once removed from the foot, can find no reason. Does it lie there in total relation to itself, overloading the ground? Because my encounter is clearly somehow about loss, about what I must have in the beginning turned immemorial for this intuition of what will come next to remain. Because of this, because the other dimensions of light around this light will regard but not surmount it. I'm too wrapped up to speculate on the results of this thing to care for its rendering of me. The poem, seriously, who cares? to cultivate. What a nice garden you have is what I thought and what I meant to say. Instead, I said, I like dirt. Come now, come undone. What came along was kasha made of oats, 
What came was a sunrise so long it never left. What came next was a word play, a word giant, a giant of words we couldn't see around the back of. What came came slowly in its state. It was a stalemate. What came made allies of trivialities, made trials of weak whims, gusts of wind and a long sea wolf, an earth dam of rocks and sea. We sat by the sea among the rocks and the others. We ate sausage and cucumbers, drank tea or didn't, maybe in a stoika, probably. What stayed with us then never left. We came to the seawall, the rocks, and a long strip of cloth between. What came was the cloth that couldn't bind. We watched sunrises and ravens and varieties of time. We watched the long, low slanted light of a near arctic evening. We stripped and swam by the best moose in town, not in town, but anyway. What came next were forget-me-nots, and they came later by the same sea, but in a different field of a different forest. And what came never came, and it stayed. We stayed wrapped on the cloth, on the strip of mud, and in sunlight, and in sunlight. Bachaos. We are bam. No. I mean, this porousness we hold, a thickening fealty, we have a thin veil against phantoms. Then, when nested, she beams on a chain. Summer in St. Petersburg, or my nerves are shot. A is for scared of the dark. B is for scared of the dark. C is for scared of the dark. D is for disdain. E is for love, for fear of it. F is for scared of the dark. G is for disappointing. H is for disappointed. I is for scared I said the wrong thing. J is for scared I'll say the wrong thing. K is for scared I'll say anything. L is for scared of the dark. M is for scared my mother will die. My mother will die. N is for scared of the dark. O is for scared I'll hurt somebody. P is for jealous. Q is for having only bad ideas. R is for having no ideas. S is for scared of the dark. T is for scared of the dark. U is for not knowing. V is for scared that I said the wrong thing. W is for love. X is for finished. Y is for not scared anymore. Z is for anxious instead. A is for scared of the dark. B is for not knowing. C is for not scared anymore. D is for intimidated instead. E is for anxious instead. F is for scared of the dark. G is for scared of the dark. H is for having a hard time. I is for having a really hard time. J is for scared I said the wrong thing. K is for scared I said the wrong thing. L is for scared I said the wrong thing. M is for scared I said anything. N is for nervous. O is for scared. P is for disappointment. Q is for love. R is for really, really scared. S is for strongly. T is for scared of the dark. U is for scared of the dark. V is for scared of the dark. W is for scared of the dark. X is for dumb. Still and still moving. There is a fight, day or days long, and I'm tired. You're wrong, you think, and I think, what? You're gone, and now, what? We can't make these words come together, but we don't, and they're missing each other. We love each other, so what? Where does the wanting to be fit in? Where does the wanting to have? Don't forget, there are small blue flowers on the side of the path. Bend down, spread your fingers, and see. There's a woman who dances as she ought to have danced. Before you were awful, you were so, so kind. They drove the train to the landing, swam in the lake, not the sea, saw friends in a forest, found strangers and possessions. Don't forget, there were Maroshka. There is rye in this flower and berries I don't know the name of. We took a bus to the landing. There was a moon, I don't forget. The thing about the Most High God is what? A most high. There are berries I cannot name, nor you. You will believe you've gone insane. Um, the next one is a bit long, and it's is about Russian, and the only thing you need to know in Russian, if it, anyone speaks Russian here, there's a big thing about prefixes. They're important. <laughs> <laughs> they change the uh, they change the meaning of words. 
Um, it happens in English too. Uh, falling out of love with the Russian dictionary. I'm looking into secrets. I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to crack secrets. I want to understand, so I try to crack a prefix. I attempt to affix a prefix to my cognition. I'm with someone I used to know on a street in St. Petersburg. There are wires overhead, many, 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 many wires. I'm with a person I used to know on a street in St. Petersburg, and I'm studying the conversation he's having on my phone. On the phone, in Russian, he says, I know you pre it, but I didn't know you raz it. And I think, wait, what the fuck is raz it? I think it's not a word. I think he pre it. I think I know prefixes. I think I can get this. Raz, as in to disperse. Raz, as in I want to understand. And so I start with a syllable, a pre-syllable, a prefix. I want to understand. I want to affix. I want a fiction. I want, I want to be affixed. Raz, the dictionary says, as in raz indicating division into parts, as in raz biazat, as in raz, indicating the positioning of something somewhere, as in raz lajit, as in raz, indicating intensive action, as in raz bushavatya, as in raz, indicating movement in different directions, as in raz vijatya, as in raz, indicating cessation of action, as in raz mubit, as in Raz, indicating a great degree of a certain quality, as in raz yeselitia. Raz, prefix, indicating dispersal, the separation of parts, the separation into parts, the separation of parts into pieces, the division of pieces into parts. These words are without meaning. I mean, there's meaning there, but it doesn't mean to me. I mean, what it means isn't there. I mean, it means elsewhere. Raz, it says, indicating division, dispersal into parts, the dispersion of one part into many, or maybe only two, it says, as in raz biazat, to untie, to disperse the ties, to unleash. Raz, to disperse, raz biazat, to untie, to disperse ties, to untie, to take ties apart, to scatter ties, to unleash, to unleash the ties, to unleash the dispersal of parts into many, 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 many parts, so when we untie ourselves, when we unleash ourselves into many, many parts, what then? Raz, I think, I'm getting it. Raz, it says, indicating positioning something somewhere, as in the position of something somewhere, as in raz, to disperse, and lajit, to lay down, raz lajit, as in to spread things out, maybe in many pieces, in many places, to lay the many pieces out, to disperse some things, some wares. Raz, I think I'm getting it. Raz, it says, raz as in indicating intensive action, as in raz bushavatya, as in to rage, to get rowdy, it says, I think, fuck. Raz, the dispersal, raz of intensive action, I'm getting untied in my head. I mean, it's a dispersal, a division, an intensive action, or what is it meaning? What does the semicolon tell? The lines in the sky might tell, the lines of electrical wires and web upon web over my head, and this person stands next to me under this web of wires on a street somewhere, spread out some wares on a sidewalk, on a side street, in a side of St. Petersburg I haven't ever yet seen. And he says, Raz Dumat. And I'm thinking, think. I mean, Raz Dumat, the dispersal of Dumat. Raz to disperse, Dumat to think. I mean, the division of thought, the unleashing of thought. Or is it the intensification? If we intensify, does it shatter? Does the thought shatter, scatter, disperse, divide into multiple or many, or at least two pieces? What is an unshattered thought? Or did he mean to intensify? Raz Dumat, I ask? Yeah, he says, to unthink, to take the thought apart, to uncreate it, to change one's mind. This does not, it seems to me, mean intensification. I think, I mean, I thought I was getting it. Raz, as in indicating movement in different directions, as in raz, as in to scatter, as in thoughts. But raz dumat does not mean to scatter thoughts, it means to unthink. So what does it mean to scatter thoughts? I mean, how will thoughts scatter? Raz, as in to disperse, to scatter, to divide. Raz, as in to intensify. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. 
Raz in indicating a complete collapse of solidity. Raz, it says, and it says next, indicating a great degree of a certain quality, it means Raz Yasevitsa, to be a great degree of a certain quality of happy, jolly. It means to liven up, to exhilarate, to cheer up, to be merry. I mean, to make merry, to make very merry, to make oneself or others merrier. I mean, raz, to disperse, to intensify, to disperse my thoughts as to all the words, all the many, 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 many words that begin with raz, that start with raz, and do they scatter or intensify or make merry. Raz, it says, it's subtle brutality, the quiet ache of a dictionary. It says, raz, indicating the cessation of an action, as in raz lubit, raz to cease, lubit to love, to cease to love, to fall out of love, disperse the love, dispense with it, raz as in raz lubit to fall out of love, raz lubit to cease loving, raz lubit to have your love dispersed, raz lubit when love falls apart into pieces, raz lubit when love divides into parts, Raz lubit, to position love somewhere. Raz lubit, to love actively, to love intensively. Raz lubit, to love in different directions. Raz lubit, to make merry love. Raz lubit, to love merrily. Raz lubit, to make love merrier. Raz lubit, to love greatly. Raz lubit, to really, I mean really, really love. Um, uh, I really only have one desire that beats might sustain us, that a fox holds its cards, that we strangle the symptom lodged deep in our hearts, that we carry or leave that what comes came soon, that the threads of these weaves won't leave their weft, that I dance on her memories, that I was she was we, that cup hurts the silence, the stalemate, that we shake the straight, these binds, those beats, that we bear silence, that silence may come, that let enough stillness swallows, that still and still moving arms tether us tightly, that raised arms may lift praises and pleasure may offer, that these walls remain hidden, cold dampness and never, that a fox catches our glances, she does, that forgiveness does not tumble, that these energies revise, that that never came slowly, comes always, comes, that elaborately, that spiders shift course, catch a daydream, shuffle steps, that we shuffle, I you and you her, that we nod who we were, that there's never in the walls of this monastery that ever, th that the fox blinks, that the twisted line does not break, that traces wash on rocks, that that figure in the distance holds this line taut, that this distance is measured, that we measure, we temper your words, that these words may not hurt us, you and me, or you, or me, that this comfort never shudders, that still moving we heed, that you see that she breathes, that we crumble our comforts, that the walls shake or bury, or that the demons escape me, that the fox glances barely, that I wanted to tell you this coast is receding, I wanted to tell you it's gone. And I'll end with one poem that I translated, because I'm basically here to visit um, an archive of another person that translated this person. So I've been thinking about her a lot today. Her name is Susanna Tenon. She was an Argentine poet. And this poem is called Oh man, which one is this? Uh, the Dissection. Almost holy thing is an almost holy thing. A thing almost, almost holy. So almost holy is this thing that it forcibly draws the attention to the almost absolute blindness of people, taking into account that in the final accounting it is almost unnecessary to see, to believe in a thing so almost, so consequently almost holy. And what's more, this element or thing has fled, or almost. And we can esteem it from the shade of what's almost bleeding over the earth, over the earth, over this exact same earth, and resuming the explanation, we have this thing, a thing, but a ton of thing, almost half holy, and what's more bloody, and therefore an embudding almost ad nauseum, and this thing in another order of things resists with almost all of its buttons, being almost uncovered, analyzed, pulverized, eviscerated, 
up to its final internal reason. It's better to say almost internal because the thing itself doesn't peel off so easily, but rather layer by layer, like an artichoke, like winter and time. Uh, time, that disjunctive factor that almost runs out here and therefore impedes us from reaching the great why and the super how of this thing, almost holy. So tam, tam, almost holy. So almost, 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 so holy. Thank you.